Well, I've been stuck at home lately, and I decided it'd be a great time to get back into Stan Meyer's research. So in this video, I'm just going to show you guys what I'm working with, and uh, we'll go from there. First off, I've made it as portable as I can. Space has always been a problem. And uh, so you can see the only thing plugged into an outlet is the oscilloscope. Everything else, the frequency generator, the drive circuit, and the VIC coil are all powered by this programmable power supply and an 18 volt Ryobi battery. This enclosure is 3D printed and what I did, I've got a switch on the side, then this cable here powers my frequency generator. It actually runs on 12 volt DC, so all I did, tapped right off the 18 volt battery, then mounted a 78 12 voltage regulator inside. Then on my uh, drive circuit, this is a new drive circuit I just designed over the last few weeks, it gives me four options for the waveforms that I see across the primary coil. First option, I've got a high signal during the gate time, which means current is flowing through the primary coil during the gate time. Second option is just the opposite. Circuit's off during the gate time. And the third option, I've got a variable pulse amplitude. And then the fourth option is just a continuous frequency. So I figure one of those may work. Who knows, there's a lot more work to do on this. Um, drive circuit as well has a uh, adjustable voltage amplitude for the primary coil. And there you can see my voltmeter shows me the voltage across the coil. Other than that, I've got a new VIC. Printed up these brackets. This entire VIC is made by these ferrite cores, these are MNZN, 10 millimeter by 100 millimeter. And if you notice, this one is not quite straight. And so if you do buy these, buy a few extra because they're not made very well. But with these cores and uh, coils almost the same as far as the number of turns and the resistance value of stands, I get almost an identical inductance without any gaps in the core. I put these windows here so you can see as well. Um, if I had to do these over, I'd probably put holes in there for some long threaded rods to hold it together. But for now, this is what I'm working with. I'm also using still the uh, little pickup coil made out of a ferrite bead. Probably got about 30 turns of 30 gauge magnet wire on there. And a 10 mega ohm resistor if I remember correctly. Now my cell you've seen before, guy in New Zealand, Adam made that, did a great job. So, as far as Stan Meyer's work, I've done a lot of math over the last few months and just kind of looking into the theoretical side of things and trying to do the math to see if it would work. I think it will, but it's almost impossible. Turns out, I mean, the whole system was engineered as one, one thing to work together. So if you change any single component in the system, or the value of any component, it's likely that you'll never get it to work. Uh, we'll go more into depth in uh, future videos on that. I want to do some math and show all the math that I've done uh, on the VIC, um, that I've worked with others and had help with others too. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot more to it. For now though, I think that's it. Thanks for watching.